Hello, this is Peter Gould. Uh, this is episode 303, Sunk Costs. Melissa Bernstein, executive producer. Hi, Jennifer Hutchison, writer and executive producer. John Scheiben, director. Nina Jack, producer. Mark Johnson, executive producer. And this is this, this wonderful uh, shoe teaser. Uh, Jenny, what, what, made you, what made you think of doing a, what made us, why are we doing a teaser with no dialogue with a bunch of trucks? We always really like the idea of doing these more imagistic, you know, mysterious teasers, and we're always looking for opportunities to do that. Uh, and this just seemed like a really great one to kind of have this flash forwardy you know, mysterious teaser. Uh, and we start talking about the shoe gag and fell more and more in love with it as we went. I love the shot. Whose idea was it to put the camera up there? Uh, I'll, I'll take credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> you. you know, this location was, um, I was worried when I read the script because it's such a specific location with a T intersection and uh, a hill where Mike could be and when I got there, they said, well, we found something that might work. And it was just around the corner from the studio, and it was perfect. It ended up being, like, the easiest location for <laughs> yes. the whole episode, and we were, like, tearing our hair out when we were conceptualizing it. We are like, they're never going to find this. Yes. And then they did. There it is. Robin Sweet, our, 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 our producer, has developed a technique with me where she shows me the location, and I fall in love with it. And then I'm always worried, is this a long drive from the studio? <laughs> and there's always laughter from Albuquerque. <laughs> because it's very close. And the, of course, the titles each season change a little bit. See if you can figure out what's changed. <laughs> and here we pick up uh, basically where uh, Vince left off in, uh, in, episode, in episode two. What was that like, that handoff between you guys? Well, luckily Vince was still shooting, so he invited me over to see how he set up this scene because this this is the continuation of the very last moment, I believe, of the previous. And so there was a lot of debate on where the gas cap and the phone and positioning, and we actually ended up moving a little further down uh, the road from where he shot it. Now here we are at uh, back at that same location where we ended 302. And, and what was that like, the handoff between you you and Vince? Uh, it was fairly smooth. He was still shooting this. He hadn't shot this scene when I started prep, and so he invited me over to see how he was going to set it up, and we talked about the best place for the phone, the best place for the gas cap. And, uh, uh, and then, actually, with the day when we shot there, which was a different day, we did have to worry a little about matching the sky and the amount of clouds and all that debate that goes on but uh, i think it worked really well it's it's a great it's a terrific scene jenny you, you, what's it what was it what was it like writing gus after all these years it was really interesting because this is sort of the first like gus gus scene where he's fully formed gus frank but he's not quite fully formed gus Fring. this is several years previous so it was definitely a thing of uh making him Gus, but not, you know, overplaying who he is in Breaking Bad. Like, is he proto-Gus? Is he quite as intimidating as he once was? Um, so that was really fun. And also, they had such a, Mike and Gus had such an established relationship in Breaking Bad, and this is the first time they're meeting. So that was especially challenging as well, because you want to fall into the way they used to talk. And uh, that isn't really going to work for this scene, you know? It's, yeah, it's, it's so interesting, because here we have two characters who are so... Uh, laconic and yeah. choose their words so carefully and, and it's, it's, it's almost like it, reading the dialogue is almost like haiku and of course here we get uh, Jeremiah Bitsui who we saw in the previous episode but also hey it's Tyrus Ray Campbell Ray Campbell yeah. it's a whole family reunion it, it, it really is <laughs> being in Albuquerque with these guys is like the world's greatest high school reunion I'll, I'll said it before I'll say it again <laughs> and that coat uh, is just fantastic. I want to dress like Gus Fring. Uh, <laughs> Don't we all? The, he's, he really is. He really is the man. But criminal Gus Fring, not Poyos Hermanos owner Gus Fring. I think I'm, actually, <laughs> in real life, I'm closer to Poyos Hermanos <laughs> Gus Fring. And his hair is a little longer. It's got a little curl to it. A little early Gus. 
That's right. Giancarlo really, he was very focused on what's the same and what's different, wasn't he? How many years earlier is this? Should he be, how much younger is he? Well, you're an executive producer. You should know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking for the audience. It's about five, six, around five or six years earlier. I'm not good with numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Many moons ago. It was so much fun on set, just having these guys back together again. You know, just, uh, it, it was almost like we never left. <laughs> right, yes. There's your credit. Nina, yay! <laughs> Our oh, I remember when Giancarlo arrived, he said, he pulled me aside. He said, I, I'm going to need uh, a few takes to get back into Gus's head. But the first take, he was he was there. <laughs> no doubt. At, at these, and by the way, the way you shot this, this, this especially is such an epic, yeah. epic shot when, oh, when we go Adams. low on these guys in profile. It's just wonderful. And in, in editing, you know, one of the things I'm really proud of is that we give these guys their due. We, we, we let their performances uh, dictate the rhythm of the editing, and we're not, we're not trying to force, force things to go faster because it's, it's, there's a lot. There's a version of this scene that is about a quarter of the length that doesn't have any of the thought to it. And I, I think this just has a lot more impact because of the way, the way you directed it, John, and the way uh, uh, well, I, I think this was Kelly direct, edited this one. Combination of these big vistas, thanks to New Mexico, and then these tight, tight shots on the faces. Yeah. And just the whole idea of out miking Mike needs a lot of room. Yeah. That's <laughs> true. Yay, Tina Parker. Awesome. Francesca. Yay. Hey, it's me. Oh. Tina is, uh, she was very patient about coming back to the show. I'm sure she read. Uh, of course, she's a working actress in Texas. She has her own theater company. And she was very, I'm sure she read that Saul Goodman was coming back. And here it took us until season three to bring her back. But man, is she good. And so much fun to really see her but a completely different Francesca. Yeah. You know, so many of the characters we do, we bring back, you know, are, are very similar still to how they were in Breaking Bad, but this is, where, there's going to be an evolution of Francesca. <laughs> yeah, before she's been beaten down by life. Yeah. yeah. And you can see it in costume and hair. And, yeah. She's and, trying to do her job. <laughs> and she's upbeat. She's, she yeah. is very upbeat. But also awkward. I like that she's added that awkwardness, you know. I, I, I think she, she plays it like, and you see more of this in subsequent episodes. She's a little bit leery of Kim. Kim is yeah. Kim is you could tell Kim is is a great person and, and very kind, but not necessarily the world's easiest boss because she is so detail oriented. And of course, uh, the, uh, this this is another great scene between these two actors. McKean just. McKeon and Odenkirk together to always hit it out of the park. The uh, it's just, they're just magic together. What I love is that, you know, Chuck is always, when Chuck says this stuff, which is obviously very insulting and, and, and rubs Jimmy the wrong way, he really does think he's coming from the right place. Yes. You know, Chuck really thinks he's trying to help, and Michael really rides that line of the condescension, but also you can see that he believes it. Um, we're so with Jimmy that obviously a lot of, we pretty much identify with him, but, you know, Chuck isn't always wrong in these scenes either, you know? <laughs> Before you destroy your That's yeah, and I love the way you write that because he's uh, and the way you said that because he, he, these characters all are all the heroes of their own story, and especially especially Chuck, and so much of this this season is about uh, Chuck's story. And by I hope boy I hope those of you who are listening have watched the whole season. Uh, before you listen to the commentary track. Because, <laughs> Spoiler alert. It's going to be spoilers. <laughs> Rolled up in that space blanket, take you to the hospital, hook you up to those machines. And, and even at this point in the season, in the writer's room, we didn't know for sure what was going to happen between these two guys. Uh, but I think intuitively... Uh, there are all these little these little clues and, and things that could be read as foreshadowing uh, about about uh, where Chuck's going. Here's my ride. Oh, 
And this this is a Thomas Gulbevic discovery, this little Richard song, which I just I, I just love. And I, I this is a scene that I would be happy to watch uh, at three times the length. Yeah. It's just it's so it's so terrific. That's such a soulful music choice. And Simon gets a cameo, gets to, or more than a cameo. Simon, our, our APD technical advisor, uh, is also working as one of our officers here and helped us so much throughout the season. What is this location? It's actually a former detention center uh, outside of Albuquerque, which now is used as a Girl Scout camp. <laughs> and we had to cover murals of rainbows and flowers that were all over the walls. They had to cover, our department <laughs> had to cover it. I love it. And isn't this isn't this this gentleman doing the photography? He's a real police officer. He's a real police yes. officer, correct? He's just great. Yeah, Francesca. Ah, uh, a return of Peter Dyson. <laughs> Classic. Peter Dyson. Uh, who we just love, and of course, who showed up originally in the second episode of Better Call Saul, just saying almost nothing except the two, the phrase "petty with a prior," and we just we just loved him so much. And Bob actually said after that first sequence, "This guy's really good," and he is a local Albuquerque actor, and he has just crushed every single scene that he's done. He's and just he was wonderful. in one of jo- John's prior episodes. I got episode. the pleasure of doing the the bathroom scene, as we will call it forever, uh, in uh, in season two. That's right, two between of these two. Which, of course, was when uh, the name Omar was first broached <laughs> between them. Yes, Omar. It's pretty great because, you know, Bob is such a titan of comedy, uh, and to have someone be able to have these scenes, these comedic scenes, and really hold their own and improve the scene with their performance and how those these two guys play off each other is so great. And, you know, you don't always know if that's going to happen when you cast people. You know, you can cast someone who's great in an audition, but there's that chemistry that only comes out when you actually get down to shooting the scene. Uh, it's just so wonderful that they have this amazing chemistry. Not it. And it feels like you're writing for him now, which is great. Yeah, the one thing I pride, I, I pride, I feel, I pride, we pride ourselves on is knowing when we got a good thing going, yeah. and <laughs> trying to trying to make as much of it as we can. And the chemistry between these two guys is definitely uh, falls in that category. Pick the biggest guy, punch him as hard as you can. <laughs> he's he's going to punch you, man. <laughs> <laughs> You just, Jenny, you just wrote the hell out of these scenes. Absolutely. Look how sad all the hair is in this scene, too. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, this is fluorescent, ugly, industrial, lived in space. That's just, it just says, it tells so much of the story. Meanwhile, elsewhere <laughs> in Albuquerque. <laughs> this is, uh, is this our first Kim montage that we've ever done? No, John uh, had no, a the post-it major. montage. Oh, the post-it montage. So you are the Kim uh, montage. Kim montage. Pro. <laughs> yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah, I'm very proud of that. <laughs> we know if John's if John's coming that we're going to do some Kim montages and get uh, Peter to Seth in the in the show. It's interesting what happens to Kim in the course of the season. I I, I really admire Kim's. Uh, go-getting spirit that she she is the hardest worker around that's something i find very endearing but as the season goes on that hard work goes to a new place and i think this is this montage is just the kind of start of that the woman that goes to the gym purely to get dressed and shower for work (laughs) the next day right that's right and again it's another wonderful piece of music uh that that thomas found for us this is actually, it's, I know he's a Northern European artist. Uh, that's what I know about. That's what I know about uh, Todd Tajay. I, I don't, I, I don't, I, that's all I know. Thomas has some magic way of finding these, these pieces of music. Thank goodness. Uh-oh. Whose car is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ernie. Poor Ernie. <laughs> hey. 
you know, speaking of keeping a good thing going, of course, Brandon was originally uh, had, I think, one line in uh, the first season when he was in the uh, in a flashback in the uh, HHM Xerox room. Right. And he's we've just we've just he's just wonderful. He's a he's a great guy. And he, he brings this simple straightforwardness to this character that's just so endearing. And an interesting sense of fashion to boot. That's, yeah. Isn't that the truth? Oh, man. And transportation. Right. He's trying. <laughs> this, this, uh, this is such a wonderful shot, John. It's, uh, you, you've said to me many times in the tone meeting, you love those slow pull-outs, the Kubrick, <laughs> Kubrickian. <laughs> uh, I find one every time I can. Excellent. Well, it's, there, it's great. And I just also love the color. Everything about this. BCDC, what does that mean? Do that we know that? The Bernal actual name Bernal of the Bernalillo County Detention Department Center. Of Corrections. Yeah. Yeah. Department of Corrections. Are. Yeah, it is a little bit of a snafu yeah. <laughs> in our MDC um, yes. Metropolitan De- Detention Center. Yeah. That's Molly Hagan, who's playing Judge Ash, which is a shout out to some of uh, my in laws, the Ashes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> She's so great. I'm really happy that that we managed to get her. Uh, Molly is Molly's wonderful, and uh, Kelly Dixon uh, immediately realized that she's in some kind, of some kind of wonderful. Isn't that yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. She also played a small role in Rectify. Really? She was also yeah. in Election. I mean, you know, she's been in some fun stuff. Also, misdemeanor with a maximum sentence of six months and a five hundred dollar fine. Victim is. We've seen this little couple in the back before. They've they visited us in bingo. Is that true? Is that so? <laughs> yeah. I assume you're prepared to enter a plea at this time? Yes, Your Honor. I wish to enter a plea of not guilty. The court accepts and enters the defendant's plea of not guilty. This, I love her. <laughs> this court reporter is awesome. Isn't she? She's a real court reporter. and. She actually inspired us because at one point she was trying to hear what the actors were saying and leaned forward, and I said, we've got to get a camera on her and get that because it's so perfect. Uh, you know, it, it, oftentimes when you hear about filmmaking, uh, it sounds like everyone figures everything out ahead of time and that there's some ma- there's always this master plan and it's all about chess playing, but so much of it is recognizing when there's something worthwhile. Uh, Absolutely, and, and, and making sure that you get it, and she's she's terrific, and of course Jimmy's doing something which you should not do in a courtroom, which is to try to have a private conversation <laughs> in front of a judge, and 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 the fact that she's leaning forward just makes that uh, very very clear. <laughs> Kim's like, what the, why the hell are you talking to me? Says Kim. Jimmy's nightmare scenario here. <laughs> oh God. And no outstanding warrants and. Where are you currently practicing law? I haven't seen you in my court in a while. Oh. It's such a hard moment for Kim, too, because she's been rejected in a professional setting. Yes. <laughs> it's like she probably wants to have that argument right now, but she has to, you know, keep that dignity and get out of there. Yeah, and also, if Jimmy doesn't want her help, you know, yeah. she's not going to force him, which is so much of what the storyline is between these two in this, in this episode. So a lot of, both of them have so much pride. Yeah, and I think there's a lack of understanding sometimes on Jimmy's part of he wants to shelter her from from certain aspects of himself. And, you know, Kim, Kim's always like, but I accept those aspects of you. Uh, and it always leads to these sort of miscommunications. I'm not the uh, first one to say this, but uh, Bob is a really good actor. I, I love this monologue that he did in one take. It's just awesome. It's amazing. It's It's, it's terrific. And I love the fact, you know, he saved up everything he wanted to say to her, yes. and now it comes out, and the two of them, are these two are just magic together, and, and I think they've only got, they just play better with each other every episode and every, every season. I'm sorry, and then I didn't call you, which is stupid, and... Now, did you say, I want to do this in one take, or was that something you guys, you and Bob had discussed, and I can't remember he, the day? Uh, he came up and said, I'd like to try it in one, and I said, of course, yeah. go for it, and uh, he was great. And, you know, uh, in post, we tried tried seeing if, uh, coming around to her during during all this, 
and it just this this is the way this is the way you cut it and it and it works it works great it's the right way to do it because the suspense here is what is kim's reaction going to be to this avalanche of words and she's in slight soft focus and yet you can this is the first time we've cut to her yeah okay and her reaction she just so uh, that's perfect and uh, underplays it thank you (laughs) you'd expect her to go nuts but not kim yeah yeah and all the time that went into what was on her monitor. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, Ariel Levine, no doubt. Uh, we have Ariel and Dessa and Jen and Johnny in our office, and they do an incredible job. And they uh, they often are end up writing things like mm-hmm. Kim's letter that you could see on the screen. If and if you were able to freeze frame it and blow that up, oh, sure. it would be a really good, really <laughs> you good would document. Learn something about the law. That's true. You could have a side class. You mind driving me to my car? Sure, no problem. Um, just, you know, this isn't a typical week around here. Yeah, totally. I Tina, <laughs> Tina's just great. The picture that's on her desk is actually of her with her father. Oh, that's lovely. By the way, uh, any of you who happen to nice be transition. In a, I think it's it's either Houston or Austin. She runs the Kitchen Dog Theater Company. I, I would highly recommend going to catch a show or even make a contribution. JB. Yeah. It's JB Blank. Who we, when did we see him last? In Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad, yeah. Yeah. At the, uh, the temporary medical center uh, just south of the border. When Gus was recovering, recovery for poisoning, poisoning the, the cartel. Well, and also healing Mike with That's his right. injury, he was eating his, his chickens right. inside yeah. that, eating his chickens, same joint. And I like he's he seems to be a good doctor. I like that. He's nice to kids. Yes, which is a good baseline. <laughs> That's you <a> good. Know? <laughs> now, John, did you actually go to Mexico to shoot the sequence? <laughs> You know, uh, uh, we went to scout this location, which is a veterinary hospital, and it's a half a block from Los Poyos Hermanos location. Ah. <laughs> and the ostrich was there that it was always outside in the pen next oh. door. Uh, so it was like coming home. It was There is an ostrich that lives outside Poyos Hermanos. Uh, all I can think of is Napoleon Dynamite. Yes. Uh, it's always get into trouble, you know. Mr. Clark. The doctor's ready. And as uh, Jonathan walks here, he uh, asked for one more take and bumped into the poor girl who, uh, on purpose, whose foot was sitting in frame. He said, I have to do this. And he <laughs> ran into her. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, he couldn't help himself. That's, that's, that should be in the gag reel. I don't <laughs> think it is. Yeah. Such a joke. It's so Jonathan. Yeah. One thing I believe the nurse in the scene that we just saw also appears uh, in the Poyos Hermanos commercial chickens. that was run on local TV in oh, Albuquerque. Really? Callback, chicken so, callback. The chicken. Well, yeah. Mike likes chickens. Isn't that isn't that beautiful? That the paint job that the art department did here, Michael yeah. Novotny, it leading looks like it's been there for the best years. art department anywhere. It's it just tells so much of the story right there. Uh oh. I think it's fine. Nothing bad can come of this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why is Mike driving? We all we have just, one of those in our nice vacation, <laughs> Mexico. Right? You know, it was just band aids. We never get tired of callbacks, do we? No. Of course, this is a, a callback to uh, season one when Jimmy was the one pulling the uh, the coffee out of this machine. This scene, too, Bob came up and said he'd like to try it as a bit of sketch comedy, really, with just the two of them. And so this shot, this this we did this until uh, we have this one shot for the whole scene. It just plays as a two-man bit, and it's amazing. And all those takes were 
there's so many great takes of that. And I think we, we managed to keep as much as humanly possible, like, before we went into the coverage, because we talked about that. I think there was an early cut where it was like, let's just play it on the wide. Yes, yes. Uh, but then when the emotion shifts, we were like, okay, why don't we, we could take it in. The, my favorite thing about this is when I was writing this scene, I was like, oh, you know, Oakley's so pathetic and sad. But the way Peter played it, he played it with a little bit of relish, which makes it less sad, but more sad. <laughs> well, he has a certain dignity about the yeah. history. Two chip process, two he chip does bag every process. Every day, this is his <laughs> thing. And did he come up with all that with the bags, that all his him. physical that business? Was him. And he did it. Uh, he did it slightly different in one take, and then he started doing it two bags, and he stuck with it, and it worked so well. Yeah, this whole thing. And Mark Hansen uh, and the prop team put mm-hmm. these burgers together. Yeah. <laughs> they were assembling them like it was a commercial. You know, we had to make sure it'd be the most appealing, juicy, delicious burger that. Yes, there were many, um, many. Uh, there were a lot of burger approvals. Yeah, yeah I remember <laughs> being very worried about yeah. having an appetizing enough burger. <laughs> right, right. Uh, and, and Diane Mercer, our post producer, had to uh, talk me out of putting little waves, smell waves, coming out of the burger <laughs> for him to for him to sniff. Uh, I still, I still regret that. No, not really. There you go. But they're they're so their, their prop acting and their food acting is so important and they're so good at it. They did it the same way. They worked it in. They didn't it didn't get in the way of the scene. It helped the scene. It's, it's pretty amazing. And, and, you know, it's one of the things I, I enjoy about this show is that we can go from very very serious life and death situations, and yet have this this kind of comedy. It's a very character comedy that I, it's a such an interesting combination. And Bob is so great in this. He's great in every scene. I, I just, I just love this episode, and I love this scene. Wheeled and dealed together too many times. There's no way the boss was letting me run that one. I think this episode may very much be about bad ties. <laughs> <laughs> every one that we've seen so far. Well, I feel you know, like his suit's a little too big. Yeah. You know, Jennifer Bryan always does those great details with the wardrobe that tell a story. Uh, which is just so valuable with all these characters. It, it's a funny thing, Mark, because all of Jimmy's clothes and Saul's clothes look terrible and loud and clashy when I first see them. And as the years go by, it's all starting to look better and better. So I think he may be just a fashion leader more than anything else. Well, and this is one of his this good is one of his good looks. This is. Yeah. Yeah. this is. This is a yeah. Davis and Maine gray this suit. Is. Whatever this crime is that Oakley's wearing is another st- I love that blue suit. As, yeah. Oh my god. And of course, Oakley is he is a type. If you go to any courthouse in America, you will see a lot of uh, a lot of people working in the prosecutor's office who are uh, very much in the mold of ADA Oakley. It's uh it's it's really more or less a thankless job. And one of the things that we did in post that, that under uh, Marshall's guidance was to, uh, to alter the color slightly to help suggest when we're south of the border. We have so many color codes on this show and on Breaking Bad that sometimes we, we run the risk of tripping ourselves up uh, because, of course, we have a, a color treatment that we do for flashbacks and a color treatment that we do for Mexico. So what do you do if you have a flashback in Mexico? <laughs> uh, so those are all, those are all, believe it or not, those are things that we spend a lot of time thinking about. Uh, and, uh, and uh, so you can see it's, it's just a little bit, it's a little bit warm and this is really picked up. It's a modification of a look that uh, Michael Slovis came up with on Breaking Bad to help distinguish the, uh, distinguish the two worlds. Nice shoes again. Uh, these <laughs> shoes, of course, uh, Jennifer Bryan. Uh, these were manufactured specifically for our show. Custom designed. And in our criminal signature red. Let me say this. Not a recognizable logo. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's going to be recognizable, Mark, because we're marketing these. <laughs> we're going to do a whole line of these shoes. That and, and the ties, too. Good. Uh, Jimmy's oh, good. ties. <laughs> You might think I'm joking, but <laughs> and but ties you, with shoes on them. But <laughs> yeah, but we'll all be we all will stop laughing when we cash the checks. All right, John, how'd you pull this off? Yeah, 
you know, it, we were very worried about it, but it's easier than I thought. This this is Jonathan doing uh, the practice throws, and then the how high. many how many takes? Only about the three, uh, and he was not supposed to make it. So that worked out well. That worked yeah, you don't want to well. make Mike too Superman-y by doing landing it on the first try. Exactly, and uh, we gave him a second, and then. You'll see the high and a, a high shot from the crane looking down, which is the double, and the double nailed it on second take. That. So that's not actually that's Jonathan. That's not Banks. Jonathan. It's amazing. That guy. Wait a minute. The guy we're looking at is not Jonathan. No. That double's very, 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 very double. close. <laughs> I'll also mention that we only had, I think, how many actual electrical poles? Two. 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 So when we watch the scenes out in the desert, a lot of those electrical poles are digital. But I, let's not skip past the entrance of the marvelous Kimberly Herbert Gregory. I, I, this is, I, haven't, I haven't gotten to meet her, but she's just tremendous. She's yes, lovely. She is. She's sweet and very enthusiastic and such a great energy. Yes. Is she from principles? Albuquerque, or is she? <laughs> she is no, far from it. She is. She is a, a wonderful actress uh, who's probably. She was first known to me on uh, the show Vice Principals, where she's essentially one of the three leads on Vice Principals. Uh, it, 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 I was just blown away by her performance on Vice Principals, and then our uh, brilliant casting folks, uh, Biali Thomas, brought her name up. Uh, when we started talking about, actually talking about the whole season, she, they said, wouldn't it be great to see her? And, I, and so this was just magical that she was available and she was willing to do this do this role. I'd love to see more of her. Yeah, me too. And another actor who, you know, has done a lot of comedy uh, and, you know, we don't really let her be funny here, <laughs> but she's so great. And I think that she brings kind of a, a warmth to the character too that maybe comes from that background as well. Um, but yeah, she's, I love this scene because it's very delicate what she's doing. You know, she's trying to be respectful of him, but she has to be able to do her job at the same time. Um, and he's in prime Chuck mode, I think. Yes. I, I, I actually love, was very impressed with the way he, he shows Chuck's cards to the audience, but not to her. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very interesting. It's very nuanced. It, it's, it's so interesting to me because both these brothers, through the season, use honest emotion in dishonest and, ways. Yeah, and this is this is. I, I think there's some real emotion here. I don't think it's just play acting, but he is definitely doing it on purpose. And also, she really seems to be great at her job. I think Jimmy's in a hell of a lot of trouble. Yeah. I want to be mindful. And I believe uh, Julia Downs weighed in. My a uh, friend who's an ADA uh, in Berlin yes. uh, weighed in on this scene. So props to her. Yeah, she helped us a lot with what what kind of options would uh, the you know DA's office go for with Jimmy. What 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 might he be presented with? And and gave us a lot of really great sort of real life scenarios. And because she's based in Berlin, she's familiar with what the local you know what the state laws are. Um, and so you could get really specific. Um, yes, of course. All the all these laws vary state to state, yeah. and so having Julia, she's she's been wonderful. To, and I've never met her face to face, oh, but must. we've talked on the phone quite a few times. She's been just so so helpful, especially at this this part of the season, which hinges on so many legal nuances. We're we're very reliant on having folks uh, who are who will donate their time, like like her especially. Oh, Chuck, what are you up to? Chuck. And here comes the you know, this big showcase scene. How, how long did it take you to shoot all this stuff out in the desert, John? Uh, I think we spread it out over three days. So it was one full day and a couple of And that little pieces. flash up there indicating <laughs> that was a trick too, right? That's Deciding true. Deciding how we were going to give it away but not be too... Just a little digital flash. Some people are going to see it. Some people won't. But again, you're looking at uh, you're looking at a real landscape that's had a lot of digital help with these uh, 
with with these these poles and also there were things in the desert that didn't look quite right like tracks from uh off-road vehicles and, and all that Buildings was erased and, uh, yeah. by uh well diane mercer super diane mercer and uh as, and, and, and I think this sequence, uh, a lot of the artists that keep me posted contributed to quite a bit. And where Mike is, you know, and, and, you know there's the shot that, that we just saw that's above him and you see the whole landscape, which that was actually his double. But these tighter shots, uh, we were in a different location than where you think it's being established because in order to make sure... You know, John and the crew could have uh, the space to be able to work and put the camera where they want, and we could easily access it, access it for Jonathan to get there. So it's on a much lower section of the hill. Movie magic. It's there's a lot of movie magic here, and and one of the great pieces of movie magic for me is Dave Porter's score. Yes, I am always happy when we have a sequence that that I feel in my gut is going to be something that Dave really gets to sink his teeth into. And this is, this is definitely one of them. Again, those are digital. Those, uh, those the power whole lines. power lines, the power which, line. which I think is not the actors. No, no, no digital actors <laughs> not yet. This time. Not this episode. And this little contraption took some thought and engineering as well. <laughs> It's this, so suspenseful. We're just watching now. This is this, I know. well. I, I, I would just. This is. I haven't watched this in a little bit, and it's reminding me. I'm sitting here with John, and I keep looking over at him because this is. There's so many damn pieces in this sequence, yeah. uh, and it's. 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 We had every piece we needed, and it's. It just. It all goes together like butter. And it, and I, I I'm really admiring how how well shot it is and how well thought out it is really where they was it else. storyboarded? It was not storyboarded, but we had to keep track of all the points of view because there's a scope point of view, there's a clean point of view, there's binocular point of view, uh, and it had to be basically shot from from here where the gun uh, box is, and then from up above. Yeah, it was it was very complicated. It's really so interesting. Shot listed yeah. it definitely, but uh, uh, I, and when I read it, it's uh, you know I love that challenge of what is basically a visual, entirely visual sequence. Yeah, if if, if, uh, if the folks at home are making a sandwich, they re they really have no idea what's happening. Here. <laughs> so don't make a sandwich while you're watching the show, please. <laughs> you can eat the sandwich while you're watching. Just pause it before you make the sandwich. And talk about this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, getting that uh, shoe gag. There were, we had about six shoes that were wired um, in various stages and, and had the squibs in them that would automatically go off. And... We had a separate wire that we put up uh, at the T-junction so that another camera could be shooting just the shoes. It was a very complicated piece. And, and I believe that we actually uh, shot a real pair of shoes with a real rifle. Uh, I think we were all worried that it, it wasn't going to look real, so we did it for real just to see what it would look like. And here we are back where we were in episode 208 at the border crossing. <laughs> this is just... And of course, uh, that was uh, that was this was border crossing was an epic back in 208 with that that amazing single single uh, shot that went over the border. And here we are back uh, with a different point of view. These poor unsuspecting criminals have no idea mm -hmm. that they've been made. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> because there's a hero present. We're about to have the hero show up. I think the hero of the sequence is about to show up. I mean, he litters. He's kind of asking oh, for it. I love yeah. it. This Wasn't is the hero the of the to me. This dog is so great. This is a real drug-sniffing dog. Did you have to use real 
drugs to get him to stop. <laughs> well, well there, never tell. under that uh, that step right there is like a, a bit of the essence of heroin. They told me the pheromone. It's oh. not ah, heroin, but Robin wow. was sweet was like, "What? You brought heroin onto the set?" <laughs> like, no, 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 no. It's just a it's, it's a like pheromone the training or something that they used yeah. to train him. That's that's remarkable. That's great. What? It, we just to make your job even even more difficult. We found out in research that the dogs are trained to sit when yes. they smell something. We, when we were originally conceiving at the sequence, we assumed the dog would bark like crazy. But of course, if you think about it, uh, it if that you're a border alert. cop, yeah. you don't want everyone around to know that the dog has sniffed something. So uh, this again, it's it's uh, we were being sort of accurate. I'm not sort of actually accurate, uh, but it's it makes it harder to communicate what the scene, what's going on in the scene. And, Absolutely, and seeing I a think dog it works sit right. does not always mean that's it's right. Found drugs. <laughs> that's right. And this is not really outside. What? Where is this? It's shocking. <laughs> on our stage. That's right. So so beautiful. This uh, I love this lighting. It, it's something that I don't think we mentioned in episode one in in season. Two, uh, Wexler McGill was a real location, and we shot inside the actual location. But when we came, it came to time to shoot season three. Uh, that location was rented out. There was a company occupying that space, so we built uh, this entire office on stage, including this piece, which we've never seen before. It's the little back patio, which is actually in the real location, but, uh, Michael Novotny and, and Steve Brown. And, and really, I, I can't say enough about our art department. Uh, Paul de Santos, just, just an incredible group of people. They built this, uh, they built this set and it's actually much more fun to shoot on than the location was. It's, there's a it's lot really of flexibility. Given us some of the most iconic images like yeah. this one for our season. I mean, just stunning. I yeah. love the tradition of these two characters sharing a cigarette. That's right. <laughs> We're trying to bring back smoking, Mark. <laughs> Watch out, Mad Men. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a problem, Giselle. And if I don't, it's instant jail, right? Lucky break. She must not want that. The exterior, we of course do still use the real location. That's right. But uh, but yeah, the front, the front exterior. exterior. Yeah, the front exterior. Yeah. Uh, but yes, it's completely different. Doesn't look at all like our set anymore. They've changed it completely. Yeah. The PPD was Chuck's idea. And it's. I don't think it's giving anything away to say that we're probably never going to go back. Well, maybe we will. Who <laughs> knows? Say never. Who knows? <laughs> One condition of the PPD is that my written confession is immediately submitted to the New Mexico Bar Association. Your written felony. And Marshall Adams, uh, who is uh, is just such an artist. Uh, he, he, he does such beautiful, beautiful work here. And he, he, does, he never wants to admit it. Uh, if you talk to Marshall, he'll always, if you say something nice, he'll always attribute whatever, whatever you're observing to someone else. But the truth is Marshall is, is the real deal. He is just a wonderful DP and the, he has such courage because he's letting these act, a lot of these faces go dark and not every director of photography would have the nerve to do the things he does. Absolutely. I, I remember walking the set with him and I said, how do you like silhouettes? He said, I love them. I was like, done. I, really? Okay. It's going to be him and his cronies versus me. I tried to pay him a compliment on my way in here, and he, like, immediately was talking about Paul and Matt, his operators, who <laughs> yes. are amazing. But uh, true to form, he would not accept it. He has, yes. We love you, Marshall. Just own it. You're brilliant and own it. I, I, I love the way you wrote this and the way they play it because he's really asking, why are you sticking with me? <laughs> What but you can't just ask that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, and I feel like it, it really comes through in their performance, and, and it's such a sweet moment. We don't get a lot of sweet moments with them, you know? But yeah, I, yeah, it's, I just love this. They're joined together, you know? I think it, it played so well. Does it mean anything? It looks like a big M. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's accepting him for who he is. M for Miguel. Yeah, so lovely. What a great job, John. Really great fantastic. Job, great, great script. Great actors, great cinematography. It's just Excellent a pleasure. Excellent direction. 
Yeah. All, all of you. It's such a satisfying uh, episode. It's got a little bit of everything. This was uh, this was a, an episode that was uh, it was a big one for me because it was the first one that Vince wasn't involved in post on. Mm. Uh, so I, I was did, I did the post by myself completely, and uh, that was a big deal for me. Good job. Well, well done. Good job. Absolutely. Well done.